What's up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of the Whole Health with Rob Carney podcast. And on this episode, we've got a special guest, Tom Palladino. So what Tom does is he works with Scalar Energy. He's the founder of Scalar Light, the inventor of Scalar Light. So I'm going to have Tom describe what Scalar Energy is, what Scalar Light is himself, because I would be doing it a disservice if I were the one to try to describe it. But to give a little backstory, I was introduced to Tom. And I've heard about, you know, scalar energy. I get the concept of it. It's really based on the research of Nikola Tesla, which is a very forgotten figure in our human history who has made major contributions. But, you know, you can argue why he was brushed under the rug. But basically, I did a 30-day trial with uh, Tom. And this was about a month ago. So I, the past month off, I kind of, you know, took, took some time to evaluate. Now, is this real? Is this a placebo? Because I've had my own skepticisms. But I can say the 30 days I did, I had a lot of great energy. I had the best month of my business I've ever had in the two and a half years of my business. So again, it could be a coincidence. But when I really look into the research and have discussed this with Tom, it doesn't seem like it might be a coincidence. I think it might be a little bit of a result of this uh, scalar energy. So Tom, I want to welcome you to the show, share who you are and share this wonderful, this wonderful healing energy that you're sharing with people. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. Hi, uh, my name is Tom Palladino. I work with energy, scalar energy. It's not electricity. What am I getting at? Scalar energy is what is known as chi or prana or zero point energy. There are two energies in the universe, electricity and magnetism, that's considered electromagnetic energy. We, we have a valid understanding of electromagnetic theory. I don't work with electricity. I work with the other type of energy, scalar energy. And very simply put, it's, it's from the stars. So as far as I'm concerned, scalar energy is the primary energy of the universe. It's the energy that, that really is the animating force of the universe. And to that end, I have developed scalar energy instruments that harness and control scalar energy. Now, frankly, that's no small feat, if I may say so, because in order to develop this technology, you really have to learn it from scratch. And uh, if you will, somebody had to invent the first satellite, somebody had to invent the first plane. It was Nikola Tesla who invented the first scalar energy instruments. And very few scientists have ever been able to follow in his footsteps. So what does a scalar energy machine look like? And for somebody who's listening, you said it's not electricity. So, and I understand the concept of chi, you know, I, I do a lot of Tai Chi, you know, Qi Gong, these type of energy moving exercises, but what does this look like? What does it feel like? Can we feel it? Can we see it? How does this all work? Sure. Sure. Um, a scalar energy instrument, um, one of them would say, sit on a table. It would be six or seven feet in length. It's rather bulky. It has a great deal of circuitry to it. And uh, they are unique. And it's, it's punctuated by two Tesla coils. And those two Tesla coils at the end of the instrument take the scalar wave and then will propagate, will we'll broadcast that scalar wave throughout the universe. Now, one thing that I've noticed and, and other uh, scalar energy researchers have noticed, once this scalar wave is created, you interface with a dimension. Scalar energy already exists, so to speak, and you simply access that dimension. And that's what I'm doing. I'm accessing a dimension. And once you access the scalar energy dimension, you're no longer in the electromagnetic dimension. So I, I know this is, might be a little bit difficult, might, might seem to be nebulous, but there's two energies, there's two dimensions. And when I'm working with my instrument, we're in a scalar energy dimension. We're outside of the electromagnetic dimension. And once we're in that scalar energy dimension, we can do so much more as opposed to, as compared to the electromagnetic dimension. So for somebody who's very scientific minded, you know, because I've felt, you know, chi, I've felt the life force energy, I've felt this other form of energy, but how does someone who's so scientific minded, how do you prove that to people? Like if someone says, how do I know this is real? How would you go about, you know, proving that? As they say, the proof is in the pudding. On account of the fact that the, this is a new and emerging science, I don't have other 
people to peer review my work because nobody has a scalar energy instrument. So my results, which are unique, have never been proven or disproven. And the reason they cannot be proven or disproven is because nobody has a scalar energy instrument and nobody can prove or disprove what I'm doing. Until somebody has a scalar energy instrument, then they can look at my work and within that dimension, within that context, and exclusively within that context, they can either prove or disprove what I'm doing. So how do I prove this? How people feel? Now that's subjective, but still it is, I think, valid proof. It's, I, I wouldn't call it scientific proof, but I would call it anecdotal or subjective proof. And my website has three or 4,000 testimonies from people around the world. I let them prove it in the sub subjectively now. I let them prove that in their, in their vocabulary, in, within their experience. But it cannot, it cannot be proven scientifically because in order to prove scalar science, you need a scalar instrument. People don't have scalar instruments. And I think what's important to note there is that's okay. Everything doesn't need to be proven scientifically. And, you know, we look at, I think love is the most blaring example that I can think of is you can't scientifically prove love. You know, love is an energy, it's a feeling that, you know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to hook it up to this instrument and prove up oh, love does exist. That's not the, you know, not part of life isn't always about scientific proof. So I like the, the concept that, that, you know, it's based on how people are feeling. And so you said there's a bunch of different testimonies on your website. What are some of the common reasons people would want to try scalar energy? What, what are the benefits they're going to see from it? What are some of these results people are getting from it? Yeah, um, I want to underscore this matter. When, peop, when I work with people, I work with them by way of a photograph. This is my photograph. People will email me a photograph and I'll place it inside my instrument. So I work through the photograph. Why? Because a photograph carries scalar energy information. And so I never work with people or animals in person, so to speak. So when I'm working through a photograph, I'm able to identify microbes, pathogens, germs, and break apart, destroy those microbes and germs. And I do all of this in this quantum field or in this information field by way of a person's photograph. So this is the new science, the science in which your photograph is your, your representation, your energetic copy, your scalar energy copy. And I work through your photograph and I'm able to access that information system by way of your photograph. That's, that's quite different. That's not electricity, folks. So when you're saying that you're working through the photograph, kind of what I'm feeling into is that you're working with the energetic field of yes. a person's body, you know, like the aura in a sense, you know, we talk yes. about in yoga and, yes. and spirituality. So you're able to access that through just a photograph. So yes. would it, would it be more effective to do it in person or is, does it not matter because you're working on a different level of energy? Um, it, it, I will say this, when I access a person's force field, by way of scalar energy, it's a different physics. It's, it's a different uh, cause and effect relationship. And what we've experienced in this world, the electromagnetic realm is valid, but there's a different textbook. There's, there's a different cause and effect in the scalar energy realm. And we're just starting to understand that. And some people might call that the spirit realm or the auric realm or the etheric realm, whatever you call that, there is a non-physical realm. Let me just say it's non-physical. Scalar energy is non-physical and I can access that non-physical dimension through a scalar energy instrument. And the, again, the cause and effect is quite different than what you would experience in normal everyday living. I think, and I think that's a beautiful piece too, is that I think it's clear to me at least that there's a lot of things that we have not discovered in this world. There are a lot of things that we've forgotten about so I'd love to kind of dive into Nikola Tesla, because I feel like there's a lot of people that may have heard the name, but they may not be too familiar with him and his work. And so I'd love to have you share a little bit about him, how he came to discover a lot of technologies that maybe we buried under, under some sand 
or maybe forgot about and you know just a little bit about the contributions he's made to this world yeah nikola tesla one of the most brilliant minds that ever walked the planet nikola tesla started his career with ac electricity much of what we have today in this electrical world we we owe credence to tesla's work or those who worked from tesla's work so tesla was the father of ac electricity and he received over 200, 300 patents in his life. He was such a prolific, not only inventor, but a theorist, and brilliant mind. Later in his life, Tesla discovered scalar energy. And he actually built a tower, a scalar energy tower in Long Island, New York. And he wanted to introduce the world to this other energy. Why? Scalar energy is from the stars. It's an infinite source of energy. You no longer need a power plant. I tell people this though all the time. The new power plant are the stars. People say, well, we're running out of energy. No, you're not. The stars will never run out of energy. So Tesla wanted to introduce to the world radiant energy, scalar energy, zero point energy, or, or the star energy. And that's where I'm going with my research. So we're, we're moving from the alternating current age until the scalar age. And it's going to be a quantum G jump. It's going to be a quantum leap. And that's, that's what's so exciting to me. It's a new form of energy. It's a new lifestyle. It's a new way of living. So when we're, just so we don't lose people here. So when we're talking about using energy from the stars. Are we talking about using that to put lights in our homes? Are we talking about to fuel our bodies? Or what is this energy going Everything. to be for? Everything, everything. Scalar energy is going to replace the electrical age. Electricity is just an inferior type of energy. The, the best energy to use is scalar energy. So Tesla wanted to illuminate homes. He wanted to power factories with his tower in Long Island, New York. I'm not there quite yet. I, I will get there someday. I'm using miniature scalar energy towers to send energy to people. I'm not sending energy to homes. I'm sending energy to people. And I'm doing all of that by way of photographs. So I have, if you will, a miniature Tesla tower in which I can send energy to photographs. And in so doing, I can break apart the microbes in the body. I can balance the seven chakras and I can create nutrients. I do all of that by way of a person's photograph because the photograph is the field you see, in the electromagnetic spectrum, there's point A and point B. In a scalar energy dimension, there's only one point. There's point A. Point A represents the universe. And I, I know that's difficult to perhaps to grasp, but in a scalar energy paradigm, everything's interconnected. So as soon as I place my photograph inside an instrument, I connect with the universe. That's profound. It is profound. I think that, you know, that makes sense to me because the way I look at it is that everything, every plant, every animal, everything is, you know, in some way, shape or form part of me. We are part of the universe. The universe is part of us. And I think that's one thing that you know, a lot of times in religion, people get caught up with like God is out there. But the way I view it is, you know, I'm part of God. I'm an expression of God because we are commingling together as part of this one universe. So like you say, you know, with one, one point, everything is interconnected how it's kind of like the ripple effect is like you throw a throw a stone into the into a pond and these ripples go out and affects everything else so that's kind of how i'm visualizing this and so with the instrument that you're using do you, how do you you know utilize the energy are you using the stars energy like i'm just trying to for sure. some visual like is, is it outside getting the star like the starlight how exactly does that all work yeah i capture star energy Okay, I, I don't create scalar energy, it already pre-exists. So this is the beauty of my work. You're simply capturing star energy. And with, with my miniature star, I have a miniature star, imagine, I can send energy to a million to a billion people around the world. Now that's efficiency. So when you're working with electromagnetic energy, it's a flow of electrons, a stream of electrons, it's a current. That's not scalar energy. There's no to and from flow of electrons. It's the universe. So you, all you have to do is tap into the universe to tap into this energy. 
That seems to be pretty simple to me. And it affords us an infinite supply of energy. So mark my word, and I want you to archive this talk. In five to 10 years, we will discover how to provide energy to homes. This will be a wireless transmission of energy. And we will no longer then have the energy crisis. And I hope you're right. And I think you are right. I think that will be, I hope it's in that time frame. I think it's gonna come. I hope it's sooner than later. But, you know, I think that we, we need a solution. And like you said, you know, Nikola Tesla may have had the solution quite a long time ago, but okay. it may not have been as profitable for people. So, so that's going to, you know, result in, you know, in the capitalistic society, you know, they have every right to do that to some degree to do what's best for their business. But this definitely seems like a much more efficient route, a much more universal route that we can really help people all over the world. Because if we look at it from the perspective, like you said, there's one point as opposed to having to connect from here to Thailand with yes. you know, electricity, that's going to make right. a big difference. Right, right. Hey, that's a good point. If, if you look at Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, there's no wires. Mm. There's no wires because he was not planning on taking electricity from the tower and transporting it by way of electrical wires because the new wiring system is the universe. I mean, I'll, I'll have faith in putting my, my hands in the universe over a wire any day. So I'm on board with that. And, you know, just as kind of coming back to the, the machine itself, the, cause I think that's something that for me, you know, when we first talked about, you were explaining this to me, but for people listening, how, do you put the picture on the coils? How exactly do you like hook up the machine good, to the pictures? Good, good point. I simply placed my photograph and the photographs of other people in the vicinity of the coils because it fills the room, so to speak. Mm. It fills the environment. And as, and as long as you're close in proximity of those coils, you enjoy, you're in that matrix, you're in the zone, so to speak. Here's an example. When I place my cell phone close to the Tesla coils, my cell phone will not work. Because the scalar energy overrides the electromagnetic energy. The scalar energy overrides the microwave energy. Mm. So I know that's one of the ways I know that I'm in a scalar energy environment because the electrical instruments do not function in a scalar energy environment. Wow. Well, it's funny you say that too, because I mean, I have some of this, you know, sacred geometry in terms of these electromagnetic frequency balancers. And I can say, you know, I'll have the same type of phone in a room with somebody, you know, or maybe on the other side of the house, same exact type of phone, have it in my phone, I have a little bit worse service, which for me is good, because I think we have way too much energy, like electromagnetic frequencies buzzing us all the time. So I've definitely seen that firsthand that just from having something that's changing the energy, I can have the same phone, the same server, the same Wi Fi, and I have worse service, you know, worse service lesser service because there's less frequencies coming in because we're changing those those frequencies in the in the environment yeah yeah you're right so it, everything affects everything else good for you and we're now starting to see the sacred geometry let me let me address that every scalar wave has a sacred geometry embedded in it there's a major groove and a minor groove and the major groove is 1.618 times the length of the minor groove which is the phi ratio or the golden mean or the golden proportion. So phi, P-H-I, is incorporated in a scalar wave. And the divine energy, the divine proportion is found in every scalar wave. That's the sacred geometry of scalar energy. That's the sacred geometry of the world, of the universe. So when you find that phi principle incorporated throughout nature, it's because it was created by the phi spiral in scalar energy. Hmm. Wow. Well, now that we're on the topic of bigger uh, <clears throat> geometry, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on the pyramids and the shape of a pyramid. Is there any scalar energy going on there? Yeah. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. I actually use a copper pyramid hmm. that I surmount on top of my Tesla coil. If, and, and in so doing, that pyramid on top of my coil allows me a greater grasp of geometry, so to speak. And when I place a copper pyramid on top of my Tesla coil, I'm able to access the nucleic acid of a virus and destroy the nucleic acid of a virus. So there is geometry 
and, and you have to use that accordingly. And once you find your way into that, that design, into that paradigm, it works. It works. The, the universe form, sacred form, sacred geometry is so important. And you have to work hand in hand with nature. And if you copy nature, copy nature, you'll be very successful. So I want to ask you this question now. Do you think that the uh, ancient Egyptians were using scalar energy in the pyramids? Many pyramids, I believe, uh, give off or, or at least are capacitors for scalar energy. Yes. I, um, I look at some pyramids around the world and I say there are there is some higher learning into those pyramids. I would say some of those pyramids are, are, are demonically designed. Um, I don't think modern day man could have designed those 6,000 years ago. So that's another discussion or 5,000 years ago. That's another discussion. But um, yes, many pyramids have, have that, uh, that ability to capture scalar energy. Awesome. So kind of just closing out here with some tactical tools that people can utilize. We'll get to an offer you have in a moment, but what are some things like sacred geometry people can have around their house? Mm. Some ways to enhance their environment to, you know, allow the scalar energy to really manifest in the environment. Sure. If, if, if you, I, I would say there's, there's sacred geometry to artwork mm. and a lot of people, they see the five proportion in artwork and many people have a visual understanding of that, whether it's conscious or subconscious. So if there's certain types of artwork or certain types of what some people would say, the flow of energy in your home, and you feel comfortable with that, then by all means, incorporate that. I always caution people, you have scalar energy instruments that far exceed my instruments, so to speak, your mind and your heart. Okay, those are your two God-given vessels. And your mind is a scalar energy mind and your heart is a scalar energy heart. And the mind, the human mind and the human heart far exceed the capability of my instruments. So use your mind and use your heart accordingly. Love it. Great advice. So Tom, people after listening to this are definitely going to be interested in learning more. And I know you've got a, a nice offer for the listeners here. How can they try out what you're doing, learn more about you and get involved? Sure. The website is scalarlight.com. And pursuant to our design to help humanity and to, to heal the world, we offer everybody in the world 15 days of free sessions. Visit the website scalarlight.com. E email us your photograph and your, your family and your pets, and we will work with you for free for 15 days. No questions asked. Pursuant to our design to heal mankind. So we're going to have to do this in many ways uh, on a limited budget, if you will. But nonetheless, we want to provide healing to the world. And this is our start. This is the way we get the ball rolling to present scalar energy healing to the masses. Awesome. Well, everybody listening, um, I'm going to put those links in the description box here. If you didn't catch it, the link to the website, we can get your 15 day free trial. So Tom Palladino, thank you for being here today, sharing what you're doing. And I appreciate you really being a pioneer in a field that is very much needed. So thank you for the work you're doing. Appreciate your time today and um, really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Whole Health Rob Carney podcast with our guest, Tom Palladino. So I highly recommend taking advantage of that offer. You know, it's a free trial. You got nothing to lose. Check it out. He sends out some great emails every day, kind of discussing a lot of the benefits of the scalar energy as well. So there's a lot of great education there. You know, 15 days. Try it out. See how you feel. See if there's any shifts in your life. Maybe take an analysis before, you know, day zero. Take an analysis day 15. Are there any differences? I don't know. For me, like I said, my business really skyrocketed that month. And then after taking the month off from it, just to kind of make sure it wasn't a placebo, like I said in the beginning, things really settled back down to where they were before. So again, you could call that coincidence. You could call that, hey, I had a good month. You could call it a million different things. But at the end of the day, if you're following along with what I do, you're open-minded to the idea of a different way of being, different forms of energy. If you've tried Tai Chi, you've tried meditation, you've felt these feelings of energies going through your body, maybe plant medicines. You've felt this different 
wavelength, this different form of energy that we don't often feel in our day-to-day life. So I want to invite you to give it a try. I'm going to put the links in the description box here. Check those out. And I really appreciate if you could share this podcast episode if you found it to be helpful. Check out the other episodes I got on my website as well, wholehealthconnects.com slash podcast. Check out all the amazing guests we've had, Tom Palladino, you know, Joel Salatin. We've had my brother Dave Robinson. As of recent, Raw Milk and Deadlifts. The list goes on and on. We've had a lot of really good guests recently. I would love for you to check all those out as well. And just share these. Share these episodes with people you think that can help. Because all these guests have incredibly unique talents, unique gifts, and unique voices that we need this world to hear right now. So I appreciate you being you, for you listening to this, for you liking this and sharing this. And I just appreciate the support. So if you want to continue to support the page, the best thing to do is to like this, to share it, subscribe. And check out some of the superfoods we have on my website as well, healthconnects.com. Go to the superfoods tab. Great way to support the page. This allows me to continue to spend the time to connect with a lot of these great minds. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all need money to live. And I get a small commission from the superfoods that you purchase. And that in turn gives me more time freedom to create more great conversations like this. So thank you so much for all that you are, all that you do. Let's continue to grow, continue to get better. Have the best day ever. I love you. Thank you.